Hello computer cooks and welcome to Retro Recipes. So, I quite like a challenge and today I'm going to be trying to get modern email working on my 30 year old, give or take, Commodore Amiga 500. This machine started life in 1987 and is currently living in my house. There's always been something about those fins at the back. Can we just talk about that view from the side? Look at those lines. Well, that's my computer. And I have a Vampire Accelerator card in there. Vampire 500 Mark II Plus. So that's giving me a lovely HDMI output, but it's not providing anything that's gonna help me get email working. For that, I'm gonna be using two main things. The first is essentially some software which is called the Clip Box. And this is something that I'm going to flash to an Arduino kind of device called the AVRNet IO. This conveniently has a parallel port compatible plug on one side of the board, which means we can actually plug it into the Amiga 500 port. So, deep breath. I understand that nobody's yet got modern email working on an Amiga 500, so, Let's see if I can be the first. Hi, it's Jan Vita. Not really, I've got to stop doing that. First up is this, this is the USB ASP. This allows us to connect between our computer and flash the firmware to the clip box. Now this is the AVRNet IO. Now one thing I have done is remove the shielding that was around here because otherwise it wouldn't be able to go in. Now there's one other modification that you do have to make and that is add this wire. This they call the strobe wire. And what it does is it connects from this point on this chip directly to the strobe pin on the Amiga. And strobe is used for hardware handshaking. The reason that's required is we have to remember this board is not made for the Amiga or with the Amiga in mind at all. So here we have the USB ASP version 2.0. So let's connect that now. So I believe that goes into the ISP connector. We get a confirmation light there that we are connected. Okay, so here we are, we've got our beautiful Windows command prompt. P.S. I hate Windows, and I've typed in the command. And AVR Dude is used for flashing firmware to devices like the AVR Net I/O, hence AVR Dude. So let's hit return and give this a try. Okay, so it took a couple of attempts, but here we are. So you can see here it found the device signature, then it was reading the firmware that we downloaded and then started writing it. Took a couple of seconds, and the fuses are okay. Good to know. AVR dude is done. Thank you very much. Well, nothing else left to try. Let's go plug it into the Amiga. Now, take a look over there. I decided to get a Wi-Fi dongle. It has an ethernet cable, which can connect to the flip box. Okie dokie, this should be pretty straightforward. But yeah, that's now in. So I'll connect the power. <laughs> no one said this was gonna be easy. Uh, the power actually is slightly infringing on the space used by these screw connectors here. It's slightly pushed out to the left at an angle but I think we should be okay. So all we have to do now is connect the ethernet from my router, so to speak, directly into there. So in the instructions, it tells you to go to the network boot disk download page. 
So I've put it onto my USB thumb drive on my GoTech drive. One thing that's interesting though is on the network boot disk download page, it says tested on, and it lists just about every Amiga model, but never the Amiga 500. So this is consistent with what I've heard online, which is that nobody's yet got Amiga 500 working with modern email. <laughs> so that makes the task even more daunting. Well, I've got the LHA network boot disk file there. So I'm just going to extract that to, I think, to drive DF0. What is this, 1987? Oh. Crap. It's finished. <clears throat> okay. Pull yourself together, man. Pretend that didn't happen. Okay, hi guys, welcome back. Um, so, we now have about 10 files on our disk all sitting on our Memorex cool disk. Isn't it cool? So we do have to make the disk bootable because it came from a LHA archive. So what we do is type install df0 is our drive, colon, and hit enter. Okay, so let's boot it. Sounds reasonable. Which network card driver do you want to use? Hmm. Go with other. Ah, there it is. Okay, cancel. I'm going to say no. So these don't quite match my router. So yes, I do want to change the IP configs. Very nice. So now it's asking me for the IP address of the machine. Network mask, pretty standard, 255, 255, 255, and zero. Main server, I'm going to say that's the same as the gateway. Which key map do you want to use? ABR dude says US. Thank you very much. Setup's complete, reboot now from this disk. Okay, let's reboot. This from shared. So next up, we have to edit the, the interfaces file and add a line that points it to that driver. Then we have to edit one more file, which is NBD driver. No big deal driver. Driver. So all this is doing is adding the box zero as a driver to the list contained in the MVD driver file. Done. So now we reboot and this folks is the moment of truth. So now it says what we do is type ifconfig with box zero. <laughs> All right, the, the box here, right? Sorry, I'm stuttering. I'm so excited. It is up and running. There is the IP address. Please don't try and hack me. And it's broadcasting as well. I wonder if we can get a ping command. We do. Okay, so now what we can try and do is ping the server out there on the World Wide Web. Easy one to remember is Google's. DNS server. That is 8.8.8.8. Hello Google, are you there? Holy sh sugar. <laughs> We're online. We are on flipping line. Well, we don't want to annoy Google, so we'll break out of that. Now, in theory, we are now set up for anything that we want to do on the internet. <sighs> okay. 
Next step is to merge that startup sequence and those driver files from the floppy disk onto my main booting hard disk. Oh, my heart is racing. So now I'm back in my normal Amiga 500 hard disk setup. And so what we want to do essentially is copy anything that's different on here and merge it onto the hard disk equivalents. So any devices, anything in the libraries, and also particularly any entries that we find in the startup sequence and uh, user startup files. So I recommend doing this in directory opus. It's very simple, you get your files that you're moving from on the left and moving to on the right. That then leaves the only tricky bit, which is the startup sequences. So I won't open up mine because I've got a whole load of confusing extra commands in there that I've accumulated. You open up the startup sequence on the network group disk, take a photo, there's no copy and paste option, and uh, just get going typing those into your existing user startup. Now you've got to do the same thing with startup sequence.nbd. And that in theory means we've got our whole network boot disk now represented on our hard disk. So this can go back in the storage box. Where's my key? I need my key. And we can now reboot. Put this away before someone steals it. Okay, we are rebooted. Let's try that ping again. Now it could be that the Wi-Fi dongle is still paging the router for a DHCP IP address, which would be kind of amusing because that means my accelerated Amiga 500 boots up faster than my modern router can talk to it. Oh, and look at that. I feel like a football commentator. <laughs> look at that, he scored. I mean, in a way we have. Stop annoying Google again. Okay guys, so I've installed a couple of programs. First one is Aweb, second one is Yam. Yam is yet another mailer. First though, Aweb. As you may have guessed, this is a web browser. Now this version, the one you're gonna want, 3.5.09. So you can find these on Aminet. Well, let's annoy Google again, shall we? Now remember I am running an accelerated Amiga, so don't be surprised if this works very fast. It's not that fast. It works. <laughs> We've even got an animated GIF, or as I like to say, GIF, because G stands for graphics as in Durham. Anyway, wow, look at that. Um, should we Google ourselves? Three practice, retro recipes, and more. Live stream. Didn't even know I had a live stream. Okay, so the web is working, which honestly I'm so happy about. Next up, a little more challenging, is gonna be email. Okay, so my email awaits. It's important to remember that YAM was written, I think, for the Amiga 1200. But people were doing email back then. The problem is the way email works has changed, whereas the Amiga and programs that were written for it back in the 80s and 90s haven't. We've had the introduction of modern encryption, such as SSL, Secure Socket Layer. I also want to just make it clear that the accelerator card I've got in here the only thing that is helping us with is making this video not quite so painful to watch. Everything that I present in this video can be done on an unaccelerated Amiga 500. So first up, let's configure the email server. Should be in here. All right. Real name. My real name, right? Email address. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Just kidding. Receive. Um, that's a pretty advanced setting, actually. 
Oh, so any emails over a certain size, like a whopping four megabytes, will have to get a confirmation first. I'm like, are any of you going to now send me two gigabyte files? We'll go with... No, I trust you. Send. So this is where it gets interesting. There is no way to do SMTP outgoing encryption on an A500. However, most service providers, as long as you are sending from the cable they've installed, don't require encryption. You can do filters with this. This definitely was made for the A1200. Let's set up a signature. Why not, right? Now, I did put a little message out on Twitter inviting anybody who wanted to be part of this video to send me an email to that email address. I doubt we're gonna get more than one or two, but even if this works, enough procrastinating, get mail. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry. Checking message. <laughs> Oh my god, I think I'm going to be sick. I am downloading emails on an A500. You've got seven new messages. <laughs> Hello from Mindflare Retro, plain text and HTML. That'll be interesting, we'll open those up. Paul Davis from uh, the Retro Asylum podcast and Twitter, he says, Why did Donkey Kong go to the dentist? Ah... Uh, did we have toothache? I mean, I don't know. All right, I'll think about that while we look at these. From Orly, this is awesome. <laughs> I agree with you, Orly. This is pretty bloody awesome. MCGNZ, you're from New Zealand. Well, hello. Oh, it's doing its once a minute check. That's pretty cool. Uh, and Retro Man Cave, that, that must be Neil. It says, hi, mum. <laughs> a very British way to greet people uh, on, an, uh, <laughs> on a broadcast. Well, let's go through these. All your bases belong to us. That's kind of regards, Mindflare Retro. Thank you very much, Mindflare Retro. Let's try the HTML version. I am error. Well, actually, you're not. You are not an error. You are working. That's never going to get old. There's his Twitter. Follow him, guys. Follow him. And here's the HTML. So what, what HTML emails do is they send a plain text body as a backup. You know, actually for older systems like this, but not this old. And then we've got the HTML, which understandably doesn't work. Paul Davis, let's find out this the answer to this joke. If it is a joke, because of tooth decay. <laughs> okay, compose myself. <laughs> Sent from my Atari ST? No, it's not. Don't lie. Goodness me. Somehow he predicted what my signature was going to be just now. Uh, all right, that is never going to get old. This is awesome. Congrats on crossing old with the new. Thank you, Orly. You continue to inspire others to do the same. Keep up the good work. That's fairly sweet. Thank you very much. MCGNZ. If your Amiga 500 can really read and display this email with emojis yeah, and photo attachment, I will eat my kiwi fruit. I'm assuming he'll eat it. Uh, <laughs> people seem to have the same idea here. Send from my 15 inch MacBook Pro with annoying touch bar. Definitely a feature the Amiga benefits from not having. Um, how, where would the attachments be? I wonder if it was an inline photo. Had it been actually attached as a file, 
from what I read in the user guide, that would actually be an option here. That would be, that would be interesting to see. Uh, I wonder what the photo was. Um, I might retrieve it on my web mail and forward it to myself as an attachment so we can see if that works. And then Retro Man Cave says, Hi, Mum. Can you please get milk for my Cocoa Pops? Thanks, <laughs> Retro Man Cave. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so I just went and forwarded that attachment back to myself. We had seven. We should have eight. Jan Vita. <laughs> Uh, I probably shouldn't have done the impersonation at the beginning of this message. We'll see what he has to say. How lovely to hear from him. And look at that, an attachment of some kind, whether we can read it or not, is coming in. There it is, an attachment. Save. So yeah, we'll put it in the RAM disk. Not sure how we view <laughs> How do you view a JPEG on an Amiga? Uh, hmm. That's never going to get old. Yeah, it's not as easy as I'd hoped. Why don't I Google how to view a JPEG on an Amiga? Use fast view. Fast view, pick viewer. Here it is. Could it be this simple? View. Select picture to view. View. Well, that's useless. This website seems to have a reference to that JPEG temp error. Does this have a text find option? It does. Good. Mm. Let's try assign JPEG temp to RAM. I didn't fail. Oh! <laughs> what the? <laughs> this is meant to be a selfie. Uh... <laughs> Thank you very much, MCGNZ. You put us through half an hour <laughs> of bulk squashing, and that is the end result. What even is that? Ah. Uh... Getting quite hungry now. Now I think it's important <laughs> to look at that file uh, as it would look on the Amiga 500 without the accelerator card using its HDMI output, uh, giving us 16 million colors. So this is the original interlaced NTSC view of that file, and it's equally hideous. Well, now final moment, little email. From Jan Peter. Hi, it's Jan Peter. <laughs> I wrote an email to Chris as Amiga, and all I got is this lousy mention. <laughs> Sorry, mate, I'll send you a t shirt. But seriously, fingers crossed you can receive this on your A500. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Now, then, an important thing we have to do is test the sending of mail. Connected, sending. It works. It... Well, I honestly didn't expect that to work. I thought we'd get some kind of error. Uh, I can't wait to get a reply. Ah, uh, send. 
Okay. No. I see 10 and um, 9 still. Okay, we'll come back to that. Paul Davis, let's reply. Um, ha, 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 ha. Now, it is pretty late in England, which I think is where they are. Slim. Let's do a quick get mail. What? Why 12? I had nine. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> These people are online right now. Orly. Orly says it sure does. It sure does. Oh, thank you. Mindfly Retro says, Looks perfect. I've attached a JPEG of your email reply. <laughs> Not more JPEGs. Oh, God. Oh, it is there. Look. Can you read this? It does not look too bad, but that's an email from an A500 running on Outlook. Sending works as well as receiving. <sighs> we, could, we did it, guys. I'm honestly speechless. Incredible. What can I say? There it is. Real, modern, <laughs> I can barely say it. Modern email working on a 1987 computer. <clears throat> I want to thank you so much for watching this video and for all of your support on my past videos. It's been quite overwhelming how gracious this community is and how I've been welcomed into it for doing nothing more than keeping computers that I love alive. As I always said, please do like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see future videos such as a very cool idea that I've come up with for this. Stay tuned for more on that in the coming weeks and plenty more besides. Until then, I doubt I've got any more emails coming in, so cheerio. If you'll excuse me, I've got mail. Dude is done. Thank you very much.